Okay, we're given a parabola, y equals negative x squared minus 10x minus 24. I want to answer some questions about this, such as does it open up or down, find the vertex, x-intercepts, and the y-intercept. So to get through this, first thing I'm going to suggest is we're in general form to begin with, all right, the expanded version. Let's go ahead and identify a, b, and c. Now a is going to be negative 1, b is going to be negative 10, and c is going to be negative 24. To determine whether it opens up or down, we focus on A. Because A is negative, that means this parabola opens down. All right, if A had been positive, it would open up. Next, let's find the vertex. Um, the vertex we can find by using H equals negative B over 2A. That's the X value for our vertex. And K is going to be whenever we take that X value and plug it back into the function. So to get H, let's go ahead and say, well, that's negative of B, which is negative 10 over 2 times a, which is negative 1. So kind of filling those into the formula. And how I like to remember this is it's just part of the quadratic formula. It's leaving out the plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac. It's the easier part to remember in general. Okay, so we have positive 10 over negative 2. Little reducing down, we're going to get negative 5 for the x value for our vertex. But we need a y value to go with this. So to get this, what we want to do is we want to substitute that negative 5 back in for each one of the x's and evaluate the original function. So the negative of negative 5 squared minus 10 times negative 5 minus 24. Now we want to be careful with our order of operations that we want to work the exponent first. So negative 5 times negative 5 makes 25. We have to carry that negative along from out in front. Next, we have negative 10 times negative 5 makes positive 50. I'll bring that minus 24 along. Combining some like terms here, negative 25 plus 50 is positive 25. Minus 24 makes 1. All right, so negative 5, 1 is going to be our vertex. Next, our x-intercepts. Now, this is where things get a little bit dicey. We could use the quadratic formula, set the whole thing equal to 0 because x-intercepts occur when y equals 0. So that would look like 0 equals negative x squared minus 10x minus 24. And we could definitely pull out the quadratic formula, use the a, b, and c that we already identified, and fill in there. That's a very good formula and very handy for situations like this. But in this case, I believe we can go ahead and factor. So I'm going to run us through the steps to factor this one. So what I would do first is I would go ahead and say, I don't like that negative in front of the x squared. So let's remove a negative 1 from each of these terms. So that's going to change the sign on each term. So it'll be positive x squared plus 10x plus 24. And we can double check that. If we redistributed the negative 1, we would get the exact same terms that we started with. All right, next, I'm going to focus on what's inside the parentheses. And I'm pretty sure that we know that that's going to factor as two binomials, x and x, if it will be able to factor. Um, but we also want to focus on the constant, the 24. So I'm just going to list that off to the side here and think to ourselves, what are the different ways we can factor 24? Well, it could be 1 times 24. It could be 2 times 12, 3 times 8, or 4 times 6. And we want to pick the pair that because this is now a positive in front of the 24, the pair that adds together to make the 10 in the middle. All right, now you may be thinking 12 and 2, but those don't add together to make 10, they subtract. 4 and 6 add together to make the 10 in the middle. So we're going to use 4 and 6. Then we want to be careful about the signs that we want to end up with a positive 10 on the inside for that middle term. So we want these to add together and make positive 10. So let's make them both positive. Positive 4 plus 6 more is going to make positive 10. Now we could go ahead and multiply this out, distribute, FOIL if you will, and you better get the exact same three terms that we, we had inside our big set of parentheses up above. From here, we've done our factoring. We now want to set each factor equal to 0. Now setting the negative 1 equal to 0 isn't going to give us a solution. But we could say 0 is equal to x plus 4, or 0 is equal to x plus 6. Treat these like separate equations. They both have variables, so we should be able to solve down for x. Subtract 4, 
and we get x is negative 4. Subtract 6, and we get x equals negative 6. So we actually have two x-intercepts, and a lot of times what we do is we write these as ordered pairs because it's asked for as x-intercepts. So that would be negative 4, comma, 0 for our y value, and negative 6 for our x value with 0 for a y value. The last thing we want to do is find the y-intercept. Okay, so to find the y-intercept, the y-intercept always occurs when x equals 0. So what I'm going to do is use the original version, the general form at the very top, and I'm going to go ahead and substitute 0 in for each of our x's. So we're going to get y equals negative of 0 squared minus 10 times 0 minus 24 which should work out to be 0 minus 0 minus 24, which will be negative 24. As an ordered pair, that's going to be 0 for an x value, negative 24 for a y value. All right, hope this helps out as you're trying to work with parabolas, quadratic functions, finding the vertex, the x-intercepts, y-intercept, and whether they open up or down. Good luck.